So Gertrude Hermes, uh, she's a very significant British sculptor. Um, she's a contemporary of Barbara Hepworth and Henry Moore, um, who are considerably better known than she is. But despite being less well known, she's a very important person. Um, she was a sculptor and also a wood engraver. Um, her work is collected in uh, the Tate and the National Portrait Gallery, and also uh, private collectors, including uh, David Bowie. Um, and there was a fantastic exhibition, the retrospective exhibition of her work at the Hepworth Gallery in Wakefield in 2015. Uh, I was uh, the first first year in the boys' school and uh, the girls' school wasn't completed uh, when I first went there. Uh, a governor's meeting where uh, the governors were given the choice of a small swimming pool or a, a sculpture which was a peacock and uh, the councillors that w were on the um, governing body knew that the pool on Regent Road was going to be pulled down. We got a pool but, but in Clarendon that covered covered the areas. Um, a lot of people keep asking me, is it a rumour? Uh, why, why didn't they go for a pool rather than a peacock? Uh, the school eventually uh, had to merge with uh, Windsor, uh, so the college took over and uh, eventually sold the land uh, uh, and the peacock disappeared. Lucky enough I was on a course at, at the college and in, in the undergrowth, because it was completely covered, uh, we, saw, we found the peacock and uh, we got a campaign together uh, to get it back and uh, we me and Steve Kingston, who was doing an article on the peacock. The campaign is, isn't finished. Uh, we were told uh, to get a covenant on the peacock. So that's our next campaign, is to get that the peacock cannot leave Odsall. Uh, it, it belongs to the community. I first got involved in the project when George Tapp, a local resident, um, and sort of community activist asked me if um, we wouldn't mind if the sculpture which was coming back from Salford College in Isabel Street could um, be housed temporarily <laughs> in the garage at Odds Community Arts. I said, yeah, of course, that'd be great. So when it arrived, I didn't really, I didn't know anything about it. When it arrived, oh my God, this is amazing bronze sculpture. So, hmm. This could be a fantastic, um, you know, project, a uh, fantastic community project to get involved in. And so um, it took quite a while for us to get the sort of project development together and to get the funding together for it. But uh, by 2016, we had some really solid ideas of how we could actually um, sort of utilise the, the, the bit of the journey that the peacock was making to actually come back to Odsall, to utilise that bit to um, uh, engage local residents in sharing the social heritage represented by the peacock but also other residents, newer residents, learning about that social heritage and the history of Odsall. So the pillar only came out Originally it was a big one and it got made smaller. Yeah. <coughs> so I wonder what the artist's intention was, whether it was to have the wind chips below the ground. To have it on a plinth like it was like you say, smaller I, I, than yeah. yeah. Because because obviously we've got the issue of stability and yeah. security. You mean there was a tube with that in it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's been cut off, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So really we almost 
So the, these were not part of the support, were they? No, no, no. They no. Got, so this is this is the sole means of support. It's been yeah. Shot down, shot down. Yeah. So so what we need is a tube that is roughly well round about the same diameter, so that would fit in it, and then weld weld round it. And that tube should have a plate on it. Yeah. And that plate should have a bolt to each corner. Yeah. And and that would. And and if you if you wanted, if you wanted just to keep the plinth the same height yeah. all all along, that would have to stick up quite a bit. Yeah, but then your then your feet would be in the air. Sorry. But then the feet would be in the air. Yeah. But that, okay. Then you could perhaps build a sandstone, build it up in sandstone. Yeah. I so think it ought to look so as though the feet are resting on the ground. Yeah. For the wind. For the wind. Yeah. <laughs> I think that needs a complete locking with that. Something about the same height as that pallet did. So the feet are beside it. Yeah. With a, yeah. With a scaffolding tube embedded into the concrete. And then mm. just, uh, well, I don't know whether they would embed it in. Well. Well, it'd, be, it'd have to be. I, I think it. I think we'd put a tube and a plate on the tube and then bolt the uh, bolt the plate to concrete and then it's going to have sandstone blocks on top of it. Ah, you know? right, yeah. So... Yeah. And came to three, and I think it comes down like that, doesn't it? It's almost like this is going on here. And if that's our bar going down... The question is whether we want the toes to go up like that. Mm. Well, they want to stick up. Yeah. Yeah. We're not. <coughs> we're not going to get them going down no. sitting. Yeah. What one of the things <coughs> that's become obvious is that they they're not flat in themselves, no. are they? That's right. You know. Yeah. You can't get a board and put it on the feet and think, oh, that you know, the feet yeah. flat on the floor. Yeah. So that, that's why I think we need we need to hang this up. Mm. And and you decide at what angle you mm. know at what angle to the vertical you want it. Almost no point in having a bronze plate if you're just going to make it minimal and small mm. and not. Yeah. The point about using bronze is that you can do something with it sculpturally. Yeah. And you can create a simple, a simple contoured surface, mm. Mm -hmm. which would just make it look like it was on something. You know, like the way that in the auction house it's on bark, um, bark chippings. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like it needs something. Mm. Spoil pizza. Sorry? Have you got any spoil in there that you want to get rid of? Mm -hmm. Well, it can stay there. Yeah, fine. Good. Uh, my, my concern was flower beds, you know, deep tilth, soft, but this isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm happy. no. Yeah, yeah. As, no, it's as, not like that at all. As all the football managers say, <laughs> on match of the day, I'm happy. You're happy? <laughs> The first time I met the Peacock in the uh, Horse of Beauty Arts Centre, yeah. I was absolutely blown away by how beautiful it was. It's, just, it's a stunning, stunning sculpture. It's just amazing. I have been involved with this project since 2019, I suppose, um, and I've been responsible for overseeing the safe installation, I suppose, um, just the hard landscaping and looking after uh, self college boys and uh, just being on hand with cups of tea and uh, rolls of electric cable. <laughs> um, Do we need sandstone? We've been told we need it by the conservation officer, I think. It's this particular type of red Cumbrian sandstone that it's very really soft, doesn't it? It's yeah. Prime to vandalism. Yeah. Well, but it's only a decorative finish. It's not. Yeah. No, if somebody's going to carve their name in it. And yeah. If we can get a builder to do the whole of the concrete. Yeah. Without the the sandstone. Uh, that would certainly help with the budget. The complete. You know that mm. they they put the the base in, mm. concrete in, mm. and then the rest is done. Mm. So they just move in and do it. Because some of these com companies will have that much concrete mm. uh, s s paid for in, in, in a wagon that's going to be done. Mm. Uh, you know, if we get the right, mm. right company, mm. 
Mm. Have you yes. any idea when your when? slot will be? Well, we've got, there's a big project going on in there at the moment, which will be finished, I think, by mid-February, um, and then I'm away for a week. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. let's, let's let, aim to move it. If we said early March, does that sound right? Brilliant. Yeah. But the main challenges were really that um, because he's a special sculpture, obviously because he's going to go in front of the Obsol Hall, which is a special building for Obsol, um, that development of the plan and all the technical details of actually how you how you install, how you site uh, a you know, beautiful bronze sculpture, mid-century, fantastic uh, quality, piece of quality work um how how do you organize that you know how do you make that work so the team had to grapple with the planning process and they had to uh, grapple with uh, the logistics of that and it was you know it was new territory for for lots of people lots of uh, team bon staff and volunteers um so that was a challenge um the time scale that we eventually worked to was a challenge in itself because all everything that we had to do we thought we'd do in six months and actually it turned out eight times as long as that and obviously the pandemic was during the middle of that so we you know we couldn't we couldn't nobody could plan for that just put on my level in there yeah right. you said he won't mind no so there you go yeah so just on top of that pile now so if you two just continue doing that for me while yeah. I get this level, Eddie, you will need to wood. Uh, you know, as a sculptor, it's really interesting to approach another sculptor's work with this um, <clears throat> sense of honour and responsibility to restore it back to its original state. And you know, you're doing a number of things there. You're you're honouring the original vision of the artist who made it. But also because this peacock has such a strong connection with the community, you have a sense of responsibility to history, to the community, to get it right, to make sure that you're doing the very best you can to restore this beautiful work, but also um, everything associated with bringing it back to um, uh, to its place in the community, which is about you know the location and the sighting of it and the plinth that it goes on and making sure it's accessible to people and so on. Um, it's about doing the very best job you possibly can. And one of the things that's um, interesting and a challenge is that you're <clears throat> you have this sense of responsibility to another person's vision and that person is no longer around to us. So Noah's done some welding, so that was the key with the key importance because otherwise we couldn't set it in concrete, we couldn't get it even get it upright. So Noah's attached a post onto here, he can tell you about that. And done some, you've got some really tricky welding done because it's three really soft bonds, it's quite hard to re-weld. And then it causes, you know, you can see the brazing around there, we need to disguise that. And there are areas on the sculpture where it's been, had concrete in it, on it, and it's tips. And Noah's got loads of it off, but there's still some remaining. And then where, there's little key points, you can see the shiny bits. Oh yeah. And, the foot. and here, and here. Now that's the nap, that's down to the bronze. So that's that'll corrode really quickly unless we put a chemical layer on it to protect it. That's not good. So we need to protect that, and we do that. And we do that using a recipe, which is a chemical recipe, and that changes the colour, but also the it changes the whole surface of the metal. So then it's protected. It's like wow. oxidation. It's like if you imagine a coin, and you get a bright penny. Yeah, that's really yeah. shiny and it, then it goes dark doesn't it and it goes with your acid from your fingers yeah. it changes yeah. that's really what I'm doing here just okay. I'm doing it with a chemical and I'm doing it artificially just to protect that and then I'll go in with a green pattern to try and mimic some of this so it all looks sort of warm sort of playing with it really and then we'll put some wax on as well to protect it we're just doing as much as we can in four hours <laughs>
we first started this project in... <coughs> and so it's taken us quite a while. <laughs> but no actual time will be uh, revealed, certainly not by me. But it has taken a while, but I think you'll be sure you'll all agree when we go out there and see, uh, see it in situ that it was well worth waiting for. Um, I'd, I'd like to, before I hand over to George, I'd just like to say a couple of thank yous and then there'll be thank yous later and you'll hear other people <coughs> speak. But it's really important to say that we wouldn't have been able to do this without the National uh, Lottery Heritage Fund and all the players um, because um, they provided the resources for, to do a, a, a pretty long project really. Um, and it involved lots of local residents, school children at Primrose Hill, girls at the, at the Salford Girls Club, local residents doing local history, sort of trying to find out more information about the peacock and its significance. So lots and lots of people have been involved. If you are involved and you don't hear your name said out today, I'll be at the end of the M62 after this. So if you want to come and see me down there, <laughs> you can come and say, hey, anyway. Okay, so, um, it's been a very, very strong symbol, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the perfect segue to pass that over to George, who knows all about the things that you need to do um, if you want your community to be strong. So um, George has been our spiritual guru <laughs> on this project, and he's been, he's been, he was in the first year of Oddsall Hand. So George, please um, put your hands together for George Tapp. <laughs> People will continually ask him what happened to the peacock. Nobody knew. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to go on a course at the, the, the college and found it in, in the bushes and it was completely hidden, uh, overgrown, uh, no plume, just stuck in the ground. Um, we, a number of us, went to the college and asked the secretary for the name and address of the principal and uh, she said why do you want it so i said we want to report a crime to the police and name the principal for taking <laughs> taking uh, uh, with, within two days we had a meeting with the principal and he apologized and offered to return the peacock. All these need to be brought back. Uh, the symbols of, of the community, that, that, that was given for the workers on the docks. Uh, the, the peacock is a symbol, it's it become a symbol and a landmark. Uh, and I hope it stays here as long as we can. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, hello everybody, uh, I'm the head gardener at Aldwell Hall here, I um, have been since December 2018. My very, very first task was to get the bed ready for the peacock, which was coming in February 2019. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. I was so excited. I was like, oh, God, this is brilliant. I've you know, never done an amazing job like this before. I've never worked with public sculpture. This is great. It's still great, and it's here. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, I still am so excited. Everyone at the hall is so proud. I can't tell you how proud we are that we've been chosen to be Stanley's custodians. He's called Stanley. I don't know if anyone knows that. He was named by uh, a lad, uh, Tommy, Rose. Tommy Rose, back in 2011. Um, so we'd like Tommy Rose to come and say hello to Stanley one day. That'd be great. Um, so yeah, the hall has stood at the heart of Orsall for 800 years. Um, Orsall Hall Museum has been a museum for 50 years this year. So uh, we are really proud and very, very, very privileged to be custodians for Sandy for hopefully for the next 800 years, at least. <laughs> so thank you all very much. And, uh, um, <laughs> that embodies that spirit of Salford, that Salford pride, and that's George Tapp, and he'll be embarrassed that I'm talking about it. And I always think from the first day I met George, he's one of the most decent, principled people I've met. But there's one thing that George still does and he's done over the years is that he celebrates everything that's happened in our community. 
all the good things and even the difficult, painful things so that we all know what our history is and we can be proud of it and we can tell our children for generations to come, not just to tell them about their heritage, but to inspire them that when times get tough, there were people that went before them and fought for a better life. So I just want to say thanks, George, from everybody for being part of this project and working so hard on it all. We're all dead tired. Thank you. I'm going to get a stamp. Just, 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 just,